Hey everyone, thanks for joining us uh, today. Uh, you have uh, here Mike Marshall, product specialist on the Benzinga Pro team. Also with us, a uh, special guest uh, with the educational series, Mr. Brent Slava. Brent, can you say hello? Hello, and thanks for having me, Mike. No problem. So uh, before we get started, I just wanted to walk everyone through real quick. Uh, this is what you guys should see on your screen is our register page. Uh, if you would like, go ahead and register. Uh, you just full name, uh, phone number, email, create a password. Once you hit request access, just slide over to the login button right at the top there, right next to register. Uh, and then just use your email address that you just used and the password you just created and then hit log in. Uh, before we get started, the last thing I want to uh, recommend to you guys is if you have any questions or uh, you know want to know if this dispensing a pro platform can do uh, you know these certain things to uh, you know make sure to drop them in the chat and we will be sure to to get to them so uh, like I said here you have uh, Mike Marshall and Brent Slava that's me and we are going to go ahead and just get logged in here uh, so yeah uh, what you guys should be seeing here is just a blank workspace, and that is the uh, default screen. Uh, Brent, if you want to go ahead and uh, tell our uh, listeners and viewers uh, what we're going to be learning today, I'm going to go ahead and turn off some of these settings and, and get this set up to where we need it. Okay, awesome. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about swing trading. What is swing trading? How might you be able to employ some swing trading techniques? Using the Benzinga Pro platform, uh, it's going to be a little bit educational, tell you a little bit about what it is, and then give you a few examples. And then also we're going to be talking about how maybe options fit in there. Excellent. Thank you for that recap. No problem. Uh, so Brent, what Brent does over here, he is uh, head of our market intelligence group. Uh, and so he is the one that is actually uh, heading up this news feed right she here. She owns some of the headlines. Absolutely. So you guys see here uh, the... Uh, news feed that we have uh, and what this is is just uh, running scrolling real-time news feed so you're going to be getting uh, anything from options activity exclusive content uh, what else are they going to be seeing uh, through this news feed Brent? well what's happening right now is it's earning season so what's earning season well it's when all the publicly traded corporations are required well, they're not required to report them within earnings season. It's just sort of the tendency, kind of get into these bands where a lot of companies are reporting, and they're giving you their performance from the last quarter. And so let me do something real quick here, something cool. I kind of show you a little feature here. At the same time, I'm showing you something cool. So what am I doing right here? I went up to the top right settings, cog wheel. I clicked it, and you can see you can adjust this text size. Text size, you can adjust the space between headlines. If you like a lot of spacing, you can do that. Uh, you can set these themes for your headlines. We give you three defaults. These are some of our more important categories right here, exclusives, hot, and market moving exclusives. What I want to do here is I want to customize this a little bit so I can show you guys a little something, uh, a little something related to earnings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this. I'm going to go down to sources. I'm going to select my category, which is earnings slash guidance. And I can click over here. If I don't really like that shade of green, kind of make it a little yellower shade of green. Uh, but what I'm doing here, close that. What I'm do doing here is I'm showing you some of these other headlines you can get besides, what you say, options, exclusives. These green headlines, greenish yellow headlines here are all earnings related headlines. Those are another of the headlines we're gonna get here. Awesome, really appreciate that. And you know, so, these off. so you guys know, uh, you guys can set up the colors of your news feed or set up your news feed really whatever works best to your investment strategy uh, and you know one of the questions that came in before we got started was how do I save uh, my news fees how do I save my settings uh, for you know so that every time I log in I, I'm seeing the same information and, and I'm just going to show you how that that happens right now and this one that Mike is setting a customization for right now is actually like a pro a pro, Benzinga Pro user tip I like to give people, this is what, how my platform looks. Uh, BZ Signal specifically, 
That is an automated feed that comes in. It doesn't have any reporter interacting with it. VZ Signals is tracking sharp price action, is tracking halt, is tracking uh, unusual option activity, and also block trades. And again, this is automated. There's no Benzinger repro reporters that you're depending on to get those alerts out there. They're firing when they trigger. Um, and so what I like to do with my profi is change colors for that Benzinger signals. It's very hard to miss stuff when you customize that way. And the BZ signal stuff is some stuff that you don't want to miss. It's stuff that's happening out there in the market in real time. So what did you do here, Mike? You got Excellent. filtered news, you got calendars, yep. and you and, got details. Okay, let's see what you do here. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm just showing you guys, these are going to be pretty much the three things that we're going to be going through uh, throughout the next 30 minutes or so. And I just wanted to show you that I have these these different things set up, and, and we could change them right, right after this, but I just wanted to show you guys, I have these things set up. Uh, I can now log out of the platform. Wait, you didn't hit like save or anything? Did not hit save, did not do anything other than select the log out button. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and log right back in and my settings are all automatically saving. So to save, you don't even have to save, you just have to set the setting. Right? Exactly. That's now awesome. what a lot of uh, the users are unaware of is that once we click this X right here in the top right corner, right above the word filters. Okay. Once we click that X, that's pretty much uh, resetting that workspace, okay, which so is if, right up here. So if I don't like the workspace I have or I'm sick of using it, I just, I just hit that little X one, it's gonna disregard all of my settings, right? Exactly, okay, so cool. now you see I'm back to the uh, default mm -hmm. of filters two. I'm back to the default of the news feed settings. So uh, if I wanted to get these set back up, I would have to do them uh, each time I log back in. So that's one way that you uh, pretty much uh, clear out all of your saved work. The other way would just be clicking the X right up here. So if you wanted to get rid of one of these, the filtered feed, I would just go ahead and hit the X I got rid of it just like a tab on your browser, right. and uh, it is gone. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just work out of Workspace <clears throat> 3 here and, and actually give Brent here the uh, controls to I'm driving to, to kind of show you guys some things uh, uh, that might help out uh, pertaining to uh, some, some technicals on swing trade. Cool. So I wonder how many swing traders we got out there anyways. Yeah, so uh, you know, maybe uh, to get you guys a little uh, a little involved, I, I believe there is the ability to raise your hand. So if you guys raise your <laughs> hand, uh, we will uh, send you guys uh, uh, maybe a free extra week on a trial or or some some sort of prize. You can, you can do that. We can do that. So uh, you know, let us know you're listening out there. Uh, raise your hand if you'd like and. Uh, uh, thank you guys, appreciate that, and uh, we will be sure, uh, we, we have all that uh, information, and, and we'll be sure to make sure uh, you guys are getting uh, rewarded. Full-time swing trader. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for that input there. Absolutely. Uh, so there might be some listeners out there who are going, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm a swing trader. I don't really know what a swing trader is. Maybe you're a swing trader and you don't even know it. So what is swing trading? Well, let's put swing trading right in the middle of the spectrum if we're thinking about a duration of how long your trade's gonna be on for. So kind of the uh, quicker route than a swing trader, excuse me, the more frequent route than a swing trader would be a day trader. A day trader isn't gonna hold their positions overnight. Holding their position overnight is creating too much risk. They don't know what could happen, whether it's with the company itself or something macro, something in China, something in the United States, et cetera. Uh, a day, uh, excuse me, a swing trader is right in the middle of the spectrum. Swing trader is going to be uh, not less than two days, probably, not more than six days, probably. However, some swing traders would say that they might hold the position for up to a couple weekends, a couple weeks. That's kind of getting a little bit more on the investment side. If you're, you know, a trader, if you're either a day trader or a swing trader, if you're going up to about two weeks. You're adding, even if, if I mentioned adding some more risk 
for holding an investment overnight. Well, imagine holding an investment over the weekend where you have two or three days where there's no telling what could happen. There's just a lot of risk that could be out there. So generally, a, a swing trader isn't going to have a position on over the weekend. However, it does happen. And kind of just, you know, wrapping up the spectrum, if uh, a day trader is on the very short term side of things, if a swing trader is right in the middle, investors are on the longer side of things. And an investor can be, you know, let's say two weeks to up to 30 years, right? Uh, so there's a quick little a quick little rundown of a swing trading and kind of the spectrum of risk, I guess, as you are a trader. Um, so let's see. Uh, one thing that I kind of wanted to really, really quickly touch on before we kind of get into the logistics of how we might be able to leverage being a swing trader with the Benzinga Pro platform is a tip that I've gotten from a really high level trader that I've known for a few years. Um, I don't really get to bring this little tip up too often because I don't give this kind of advice too often, but I thought this was a good time to do it. So. Uh, I have a trader buddy who is a, a, a esteemed, respected uh, co commenter on market structure, on high frequency trading. And for as long as I've known him, he's given me this really, not, not really me, but he's given investors this really good piece of advice. And that is, if you're having trouble at the sort of duration that you're trading, if you're a day trader, if you're, if you're a scalper, if you're looking for only... Uh, a penny or two or fractions of a penny over a very short time span, like a matter of seconds, what you can do is adjust your time frame. So in other words, if you are trying to be a scalp trader, if you're trying to be a day trader and you're just, you're just not doing very well, well, right now you're competing against other day traders. You're competing against other scalpers. And what is happening is some of those are probably not even humans. As, as the duration goes down, we're talking about you're putting yourself up against more, probably algorithms, more computers that are trading, computers that are adapting to headlines and they're trading on something right away. Um, so computers are usually pretty fast, aren't they? They, they are <laughs> extremely fast. So what he's always said is if you're kind of just, you know, not doing well at a lower duration, Try to, and it, and it doesn't always work for people's strategies, but give it a try. Try to adjust your time frame. Go a little bit longer. What his idea is, what his kind of thesis is, is that when you're, you're doing a trading strategy, you're putting yourself up against the same kinds of trades that you're doing. So if you're only trading for a matter of seconds, you're probably competing against a computer. If you adjust your time frame, make it a little bit longer, make it a day or two or a week, then you're going to be against those traders who are probably human and it'll just actually kind of maybe be a little bit more appropriate for your strategy. What do you think about that? I think it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a high level concept a little bit, but it's, it's really pretty basic. I think that uh, we actually had a uh, listener, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm guessing as well, call out your source. Oh, <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great call. Cal, that is a good call. You were right, sir. It is uh, a friend at Bright Trading, Dennis Dick. He's an amazing trader. Um, he is one of the co-hosts uh, for our morning show, Pre-Market Prep. I think Mike is about to pull up the website right I here. Sweet. So Benzinga hosts a uh, pre-market show. It runs from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. The quick idea behind the show is we want to get you prepared for the day. What we're going to do, what the co-hosts are going to do, is we're going to talk about the top news items for the day and Dennis and Dennis's uh, co-host Joel Conan, they're great technicians. They've been doing technicals, they've been doing patterns, they've been doing market structure stuff for a really long time. And what happens is they look at news items and then they look at the important technicals that you should keep your eyes on each day. Awesome. Again, so it's kind of like, you know, uh, the stock had earnings today. Well, the last time the stock had earnings, it traded up to this level. Keep your eyes on that level. Uh, after after the earnings came out, the stock traded down to this level. Keep your eyes on that level. Excellent. Thanks, Brent. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this right here, this website right up here, I'll drop it into the chat for you guys. Uh, you know, every morning, 8 a.m., 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, uh, you know, just an amazing place to get, uh, you know, some free resources on, on the market, on breaking news. Uh, and, you know, right down here, you guys can use the same exact email and login as your pro. 
uh, to sign up and you guys get access to the chat. It's completely free. The chat is great. The, I mean, you know, there's there's a, a group of dedicated listeners that, that yep, are, are exactly. definitely uh, making sure that they are staying up to date on what's going on. Uh, so, uh, you know, definitely recommend you guys uh, hopping in and, and Give listening. Give it a check. And, uh, yeah, 100%. If you guys have questions, like I said, they'll be sure to get to them. And, yep. and especially if you're using uh, Benzinga Pro, they, they try and prioritize how they answer the questions that well, way. Well, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's, it's just the rumor I heard, Brent. All right, so uh, we got a we got a little chat in here. So Matt's saying he's, he's kind of actually in between a day trader and more of a long-term trader. So maybe you're on the uh, few-week side of things, Matt. That's cool. I think you can still use – a couple of the tips we're going to try to give you here today. And so I'm going to show you things, some things in Benzing Pro. And the sort of theme that as I was kind of thinking about this topic, I'm like, okay, how can I do this? So uh, one thing that I thought about is what are some of Benzing Pro's near-term relevancy pieces of content? Now, what do I mean by that? Near-term relevancy. Well, these headlines that are here in Benzing Pro that we're looking at right now, they're not going to be uh, from a trader's perspective. From a researcher's perspective, they're going to be relevant for a long time. From a trader's perspective, the headlines that are going into here are kind of like, you know, you, you can trade on them. If you don't trade on them after that, you're probably not going to make a move, really, right? So what I want to focus on is a couple of sort of the near-term relevancy channels and categories. And why don't we just start with options? I think it's one we have a ton of fans of options out there in Benzinga Pro land. So why don't we just give the fans what they want. We'll talk about options. So Excellent. And how you would get to options and, and how to filter out your feed, you could do a keyword search right up here, right above the, uh, the ticker symbol. You could do options. This is not what I'm going to do, but I was just showing you guys. You can do keyword searches right at the top. I'm going to go ahead and select my filters uh, so I can just filter out <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe what some would call some noise if it's not uh, pertaining to their strategy. So I'm yep. going to filter out uh, some of the other stuff that is coming through. And you, and you click that. What happens when you, what happened behind this screen? What happened on Benzinga Pro when you click that? Kind of Absolutely. That so what's going on is I'm turning off everything else. So I'm not going to get, uh, you know, our, our most featured channel. I'm not going to get market moving ex exclusives. I'm not going to get exclusives. I'm not going to get hot. Just an option. I'm right? only okay, going to see option activity coming through uh, my feed if I select options right here. Okay, awesome. So um, kind of what I wanted to highlight with options a little bit here is uh, what I think you can use, you know, Mike showed you how to get there, and there's, a, there's another way that we can show you. Um, oh, actually, this is, I think, did the guys, I think the developers updated something here. I thought... Uh, last time we had to kind of like go over and do benzene signals also. That's yep. cool. I think they tagged options in here also. So what's happening here is here's your option feed. You're seeing both benzene and wire, meaning these are these are actually stories. Let me see if I can find you. Uh, here's an option alert that was hand typed out by somebody on the benzene and news desk. So I see the wire code over here. It says BZ wire. There's an option alert over here. Um, what happened? What happened is a reporter on the team seeing some option activity, maybe it hit our Benzinga signals uh, alert here, maybe it didn't hit it, but they noticed it, they thought it was relevant enough that they wanted to hand type out a headline. So just kind of think about the importance there. It's just a little bit of effort, but also somebody using the platform should use that as an indication of higher interest, at least by this Benzinga Pro reporter. So what's the difference that we're looking at here with the option alert that says BZ wire and the option alert that says signal? So signals is automated. Signals, I was explaining just a little bit before, signals is one of the few automated aspects of Benzinga Pro right now. Options is one of those aspects, excuse me, in addition to trading halts, block trades, etc. cetera. Uh, these ones, again, are automated. So there's no reporter interaction. We've set some criteria for these option alerts to fire. Our system is watching a ton of tape throughout the day in equities and options, and it's matching against those criteria. If one of the criteria is hit, then one of these options alerts or whatever the signals will fire, and it's within a fraction of a second. So this is, this is very up to speed. And if you're a swing trader and you want to use options, 
what I would do, what I would recommend is, and, and unfortunately we don't have a way to filter by this yet, but I'm sure we definitely will in the next few iterations here. Um, so what I was going to say is look for a near term option expiration. So let's break these alerts down really quickly. So what are we getting in this uh, veil headline here? So let's take, let's take a quick walk through it. So it's alerting to the ticker. The ticker is V-A-L-E. It's a Brazilian miner. Uh, the first aspect, the first little facet here of this alert is going to be the expiry. In this case, this is a weekly option. It looks like it's going to expire on Friday. This one above SMG, this won't expire till about mid-May or so. So that would mean that that option is more so uh, three, four weeks, four week option contract. Right, exactly. And so, you know, I think a few of you can get the picture here, but uh, the near term, the option expir expiry, at least that option better is betting that there will be some kind of action in the stock in this case, ballet, that will get it to the $9 level before Friday. So what's the stock trading at right now? Stock trading at about 875. So not a huge move before uh, Friday, but if you are looking to go long something, you know that at least this better is betting there will be uh, at least, how do I do the math here really quick? At least 50 cents in upside uh, until that option can be exercised. So I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let me let me jump back and keep walking you guys through these alerts. So yeah, your expiry here, you got your strike price here. This is when the contract can be exercised. This is the type of option contract. In this case, it's a put. Uh, and then here over a little bit further, this is the volume. This first number is the volume of contracts going off at this contract. Uh, so what's happened is uh, about today, about 4,200 contracts of the ni Friday $9 puts in ballet went off today at a price of about 37 cents. Before today, that's the next number over here. This next number is about 1,500. What this number is, is open interest. That's what this little OI acronym stands for right here. And so what this option alert is showing you is that today there happen to be 4,200 of these contracts that traded versus only about 1,500 in all the days before that. That's not exactly technically how it works, but that's kind of how I think of it. It's helpful to think of it that way. Excellent. Okay, um, and again, so I kind of got a little, ahead myself, a little ahead of myself there. Let me jump back. So uh, what you can be doing as you're looking at these is basically just looking for near months, or if it's a week, it'll say the, the day of the week. And you can know that should be a very near term. Uh, I believe that weekly options don't go out more than two months. Somebody in the chat, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think your weekly options go out more than a month or two. So if you see a day of the week here, or if you see uh, in this example for AMD, we have a May contract, which is away from the middle of the month. Uh, for monthly options, most of the monthly options will go for expiration uh, around the middle of the week. Usually the number that I like to look for is like the 19th here. This is probably uh, a monthly figure. If you see a figure other than around like the 16th or 15th, it's probably a weekly contract. I would bet this AMD contract is a, is a weekly contract. So look for near term options here. Uh, September is definitely far away enough where I don't think you're gonna uh, get much action in this one unless there's something going on that would get the stock down to about 40 bucks. So this is a put going for about 40 bucks. Uh, so if there's any more questions on kind of how you might be able to use uh, these option alerts and specifically focus on, uh, focusing on when they're gonna be uh, expiring, throw some more questions, we can jump back if we want to. I'm gonna keep moving forward <laughs> to the next little thing, if that's cool with you, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. I guess the one thing I would like <clears> to add is is you know usually on the options expire on Fridays, correct? Options expire on Fridays always. Excellent. And so, is it usually uh, is that stock usually a little more uh, volatile, if you will, on a, on a Friday? Absolutely, for sure, for sure, for sure. So, uh, and especially volatile on. I'm I'm trying to think of my schedule here. We're probably coming up to one here pretty quickly. You hear some traders, and we're getting a little higher level here, but you hear. Some traders talking about uh, an expiry where there is, it's called a witch. It will be a 
double witch or a triple witch or a quad witch and what's happening is more than one security more than one type of security is going to expire on a friday and when we have these uh double quit double witch quad witch triple witch days there's gonna be even more volatility okay so as a swing trader as someone who uh <laughs> might be in and out of certain trades yeah. that would be some some notable information correct so the kind of highest level thing that I wanted to mention, and you, and you sort of forced me to go a little bit to the end of what I was hoping to talk about, but that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. The the kind of highest level thing that I, I think a swing trader might be interested in is volatility. So the, the sort of things that I'm going to be showing you here today are going to be all based on volatility. It's going to be based on uh, you don't necessarily know if the stock's going to go higher or lower, but a swing trader, if you are interested in playing volatility, you probably don't care if the stock's necessarily going to be going higher or lower. You just want that liquidity. You just want the stock swinging around, whether it is to the bullish side or to the bearish side. Okay, excellent. And I'm not mad at you for doing that either. I, I appreciate it. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show here real quick, and we've already kind of touched on a little bit, is uh, some things going on with this BZ signal. And BZ signals is, <clears throat> excuse me, just a little different uh, as far as sorting by them in our filters here because it's kind of in this other subclass. So you see the tabs up here at the top. We got watch list moving from right to left. We got watch list. We got sources. We got categories. Uh, I think the ones that Mike has showed you here so far have been categories. So these are all the classes of news that are reporters on the team are tagging our headlines or stories by sources is where your information is coming from. The ones that are on by default when you load up your Benzing Pro platform are going to be Benzing Aware, which is headlines and articles, and Benzing Signals, which again is that automated feed. We also have, if you kind of really want to get uh, into sort of the raw data, if you really sort of want to do some deep research, you can also turn on press releases. You can be getting all of the uh, press releases coming directly from companies. Uh, you can also turn in the SEC filings and you're going to be seeing a bunch of SEC filings. It'll be a lot more to go through, uh, but if you're that kind of user, then that might be what you want. So what I'm going to do here, did you have a... No, I was uh, just going to say, you know, and if that is something that is interesting to you guys, uh, please drop us uh, a note and we can, uh, you know, give you guys a call personally and, and walk you through how to uh, digest some of that information or how to filter your feeds and, and, and that... that uh, that those type of uh, filters. Cool. Good little note. Give him Mike a call. He won't mind. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to turn on benzene signals here. I'm just going to show you what benzene signals looks like. You might want. Yep. Just what did I do? Category. Oh, okay. Kind of Thank you well. very much, sir. Okay, so I'm just going to hit done, and we're going to be only saying. Notice your wire code over here, all the way on the right, is only going to be saying signal. So what are some things here that we're seeing? Well, uh, Weight Watchers had some news after the close. They got a new CEO. Um, it was sort of an overhang for the company for quite some time. So look at, here's actually the first one. And this is probably about the time that the news hit today, uh, Weight Watchers. So the stock spiked higher. Now we're getting a little bit of volatility in the after hour session, the stock's kind of spiking down. So uh, a quick example of some material price action, let's call this. The price action that is going to be in these alerts is going to be very near term. I believe that the scale that uh, our developer has set these to fire is less than I want to say a, I want to say a three. I was going to say five. I want to say it's actually only three minutes. So uh, basically, we have a scanner that's looking at all the stocks throughout the day, a few times a second. If there is a move, I want to say over I want to say like a third of a percent over a few minute span, you're going to get one of these triggers. And it's going to alert you to basically start doing your own research if you don't see something in Benzinga Pro. Um, so keep going here. So what else are we seeing? We're seeing 52 week highs. Don't really want to talk about that one right now. Let's talk about block trades also. So what, what, what's happening here in these two block trades? Uh, so we're looking at Illumina block trade. We're looking at a Southwestern Energy block trade. Uh, I kind of want to find one with a little bit more volume. This one is rather uh, appropriate here. So Cousins Property, I believe this is like a real estate company. So what happened here? So there was a trader and with block trades, what happens is a lot of times if you're looking at block trades, 
you're going to be getting an indication toward an institution. You're going to be getting an indication toward the institutional side of things. There's probably not a lot of retail investors who can go out and 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 go to want to buy 588,000 shares. So how a lot of our users like to use black trades is sort of an indication on what the institutional side of things might be doing. Uh, so what happened with Cousins here? So uh, either a buy or a sell, you can't really tell. An institution called up a broker and said, you know, we want to either get into Cousins Heavy or we want to get out of Cousins Heavy. And we got about, let's say we got about 500,000 500, shares that we want to get rid of. So that broker really quickly is going to put together uh, some stuff. He's going to see if he can get a block together. Maybe he has to add a couple other institutions who might be interested in buying or selling at this time. And basically what happened is uh, that specialist, that person that's making that happen, they're putting it out there in a whole block. And you can't really see these go off if you're looking at a chart. You might be able to see a little spike in some volume, but for the most part, uh, something like what we got here on Benzing Pro is what you're going to want to use to get a hold of these black trades. Um, and then also we got your options alerts here that are automated. And Brett, if you don't yeah. mind, I'm going to jump in here. Okay. Uh, so, you know, over the past three to, to six months, it, we developed uh, BZ, the, the signals. Uh, so it just started with, I believe, the spiking activity and the uh, – halted and resumed okay. activity yeah yeah i think you're right and we we received feedback that we wanted more option activity so we built in the option activity and then the uh the spiking up and down and now we added the uh the 52 week highs uh so what i'm trying to tell you guys is we're building this platform for our users uh we're really leaning on on the investment community the trading community to tell us what they want and, and what we are doing is, is we're putting our investment dollars, people, the companies that are investing in us in the development resources to build that platform. So, you know, like I said, we are definitely leaning on all of you guys out there to, to tell us what you guys are looking for. And maybe you're using a different system and they're doing something really well and you wish Benzinga Pro had that. Let us know what it is. Uh, you know, we would happily, uh, you know, let you know if, if that could ever be in our timeline of development or if it's just if it's if it's something that we just couldn't develop so you know definitely a a, a great time to to be a user of, of benzinga pro and and you know tell us your feedback and what you want to see great great stuff and i can definitely verify uh that we love getting feedback and we really just base what we're going to do with the platform off of the stuff over here so get your thoughts in the mic for sure uh, okay, so that I mean that was actually a good time to kind of butt in a little bit, Mike, because I think I went over the only other one that I didn't go over at BZ Signals is trading halts. And let me just type in I don't I don't see one up here, so let me just type in the keyword, see if I can find it really quickly. And there's your halt. So you uh, will use these codes over here. A trading halt P1 means that there's news coming. There was news in Express Scripts. The stock got halted and then the news was released. There was news coming in T-Mobile. They halted the stock and then the news was released. Uh, if you see this uh, T3 code, it means that the stock is about to start trading again. Uh, so this doesn't really apply to what we're talking about today, but I just wanted to show you just to kind of round it around, round it off. So why am I showing you these Benzinga signals? Well, again, the topics that I wanted to show you today in the platform are what I'm calling near-term relevancy alerts, near-term relevancy headlines. The stuff that you're seeing in here via BC Signals is happening in the very second. Like it's it happened in the market, and then you're going to be seeing it on BC Signals on Benzinga Pro within literally a fraction of a second. Uh, it might be one second, maybe but that that even be kind of long. So. This stuff is happening out there in the marketplace right now. So if you want to act on it, if you're a swing trader and you're looking for a little bit of volatility, uh, you're looking to get in and out of stuff really quickly, this is going to be a good way to get shown those pieces of interest. You don't necessarily know why somebody is talking about ballet or why there's a big option bidder in ballet here, but you can kind of use that signal to go do your own research uh, to maybe get a hold of the Benzinga News Desk uh, to maybe get a hold of some of your other sources and see if they might be able to help you get an idea. Excellent. And uh, we are going to get oh. to that question. Uh, but uh, 
the way you can uh, search the HALT is by just typing in as a keyword uh, the word HALT and uh, you will be able to to see all of the halted uh, statuses. Yep. And then the codes behind it. T1, you said, is trading uh, is a trading halt with news pending. News pending. Yep. And then uh, uh, the T3 is is informing it's, them that the stock is getting ready to reopen. So let's say T-Mobile here. So T-Mobile uh, was halted about four four p.m. and 17 seconds. And the news hit shortly after that. The NASDAQ put out an alert that said the stock's going to open for trade at 425 and 00, zero seconds. Right at 425 and 00, zero seconds, that thing started trading again, and you probably get a bet that there was some kind of gap in the price there. And so what I did is I'm just going to pull that up for you guys to see if we can kind of track down the exact uh, <clears throat> cool. Uh, what? What's the word? You uh, I don't know. Timing? Uh, the exact timing of how this all played out. Thank okay. you. So we see here that the stock halted. Uh, no, no more activity happened right at four. Uh -huh. uh, we see the BZ signal told us that. Uh, and also, we were lucky enough to have uh, someone on the desk uh, share with us why. In case you didn't have benzene signals on. Yep. That's not a good idea. I would honestly recommend having benzene signals on. It's a great resource. In case you didn't, we have somebody on the news desk who's typing it out. It looks like, you know, a couple minutes later, we got your full headline here. Uh, it looks like T-Mobile reported some pretty, I was going to say strong because I was looking at the EPS figure, uh, but actually it looks like it was kind of a mixed report. Their sales were kind of a miss there. Okay. So uh, then we see some other news that's coming in, and we see that it resumes again at 425. Uh, it actually... Or 430. Yep. When you get that quote that says it's going to be resuming, it'll be a five minute uh, heads up. It'll resume, it, whenever you get the indication that it's going to resume, it'll be five minutes after the stock actually resumes trade. Wow, and you can see here that that was exactly five yep. minutes. So as a trader, uh, as a, a swing trader, knowing that this, this T3 uh, uh, tag is coming out, and, and what is kind of interesting is we could probably even uh, do something like this. Nice. And, and now we know that, you know, pretty much five minutes from, from this moment, it's going to open back up. You're going to get a ton of volatility. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not as well versed as you, Brent, yeah. but that is exactly what I was going to say, is, is there's going to be a lot of movement once, yep. once those uh, horses come out of the gate. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Um, and something, like, well, I just kind of want to, do something here really quick. I just kind of thought of it. I'm just going to get, I'm going to get a little crazy here for a second. So let's imagine we have, do we have all benzene signals? Let me turn this one on. Sources, BZ signals, done. Um, this one, this one's for you, Matt. I think you might like this one. So I hope you're watching here. So I'm turning on only benzene signals here. If you like the stuff. You might have missed it over what? here. What? What I do? Room. Dang it. If you like the stuff that you're seeing on benzene signals, there we go. My clicky finger wasn't working there. Uh, if you like the stuff that you're seeing on benzene and signals, like in this window, maybe you just want to keep your eyes on halt only right here. Uh, if you like the black trades, use the keyword search. This keyword search is so basic, but it's so powerful if you kind of just mess around with it. I mess around with it all day, so I know these pretty easily. If you want to just watch all the stuff that's ha happening in your DZ signals, just type in your alerts here. Uh, with the keyword. So now what we're getting here is, and then what's the other one? Options. So now what we got here is a, is a news feed where you're only getting automated alerts and they're all broken down by the type of benzene a signal alert that you're getting. You got your black trades in one, you got your uh, notable price action in one, you got your options alerts in one, and you got your halts in one so that you can uh, start looking for news that's upcoming if you see one of those halts. That was kind of that was kind of random, but I thought Matt might like that one. So, and so to share. as you see the screen broke into four, you could obviously have any of these screens as your main screen, uh, or if you wanted two of them, you know, side by side. Uh, this platform is is really set up to to be able to adjust to the the trading strategy of the individual. And check this out. This is a pretty new feature. 
I think the developer, our developers just recently did this where you can start adjusting the size. We didn't have this capability for quite some time. Uh, so that might be something you might want to use. All right, so I just had one more really quick category I wanted to go over. If you guys are looking for some volatility, uh, it's the rumors category. It's one of my favorites. If you're looking to kind of get in and out of a trade really quickly, uh, I'm going to close this one. I'm going to open our filters back up. I'm going to turn on benzene and wire. I just leave my benzene signals on for now. And I'm going to hit rumors here real quick. So now we're only going to see rumors. And Brent, you know, yes. what is, what is, what makes our rumor channel so special? Okay. That's a good question. So, um, what makes our rumor channel so special? Well, we have a ton of sources. The, the sources out there that we use is just, if, if you haven't done news reporting, if you haven't done this stuff before, it, it'll blow your mind for sure. Uh, but you know, our top, one of our top sources for news is press releases, stuff coming right from the companies. Also SEC filings, stuff coming right from the companies. Other than that, we also watch other publications like Bloomberg, like Dow Jones. Uh, we're also watching social. We have access to, and this is where it gets good. This is where the rumor category gets good. We have access to some other trader communities that a lot of traders don't have access to. It might be a chat room. It might be uh, another trader community. It might be a trading desk. It might be uh, another research desk, a sell side firm's research desk. So we have resource, we have sources everywhere on the street. A lot of other publications cannot leverage their sources the same way that we can. If Bloomberg, for example, reported on a rumor that we are hearing about that is moving a stack, let me say that again. If if a stock, basically all of our rumors are, most of our rumors, sorry, are happening after the stocks are moving. And we kind of look, we go, okay, this stock just moved up a half percent over the last 30 seconds. What's going on? Well, we find out that there is maybe a trader community that is pumping a rumor. We don't know the legitimacy of the rumor. We're, we're not trying to alert you to the legitimacy of the rumor. We're just trying to alert you to the likely reason why a stock is moving. And then again, that's not something that, you know, Bloomberg can really do. It's not something really that Reuters can do. Uh, if they report that stuff, you know, it sort of becomes true. And again, we're just trying to highlight the volatility for you. So let me think, see if I can, I'm just looking over our rumor speed here uh, for today, see if I can find you a good one. So um, why don't we try here uh, this Michael Kors rumor. So this is, a, this is kind of a story that's been developing for some time. Um, and let's see here. So what, what time does this one hit again? So this one hit about, I lost my place over here. Uh, so this one hit about, uh, 1045 or so. Uh, and actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull up a different, uh, chart here. I'm going to pull up, uh, Kate Spade. So there's a report right now. It's, it's kind of this three, three way thing going around Kate Spade, Michael Kors and coach have all been involved recently in this kind of takeover chatter. It seems like one of them is going to buy another one. Uh, they're going to do some kind of deal. So what happened about 1045? You see this rumor headline here. It says uh, there's shares of Michael Kors, which spiked. Uh, shares of Coach moving also. Shares of Kate Spade moving also. We started looking around. We found out that there was uh, some traders who were passing around this rumor that uh, Michael Kors, talks between Michael Kors and Coach, may have, excuse me, uh, talks between Coach and Kate Spade may have stalled because uh, Coach could be exploring some kind of deal with Michael Kors. So what do I got over here? I got Kate Spade uh, over here. So that would have been about 1045. Let's see if I can find the timestamp here. So right about there. So the stock started moving lower here. You can see this big red bar that started happening as this rumor started getting passed around. And remember, this is happening in like real time. We haven't even had a chance to get on the phone with the company to try to confirm this rumor. We haven't even had a chance to call around to analysts or anything yet to see what they think about this. And the stock's already moving lower. And what I would highlight with these rumors is not to take them, you, you, you wanna take them with a grain of salt. Uh, so what happens a lot of times is these traders will uh, sort of, promote these rumors, the stocks will move, they'll get their trades in, and then they'll evaporate. So look what happened here. This is, I'm, I'm, again, I'm trying to point at some volatility. 
not necessarily directional. I don't want you going out and selling Michael Kors shares because of this headline. I want you to be looking for some volatility because a lot of times what happens is these things start moving and then they end up coming back throughout the day. So that's what happened here in Michael Kors. Uh, Michael Kors, uh, initially traders read this as a negative thing, so the stock started falling. By the end of the day, the stock was uh, past the levels that it was at, so it basically rebounded. So if you were looking, if you're using Benzinga Pro for rumors to get some volatility, this would have certainly helped you today, I think. Awesome. And you know, uh, when hearing that, you know, it, it kind of uh, made me think of, you know, maybe someone who's new to trading, uh, and is, is trying out the day trading and, you know, maybe exiting and entering companies uh, too quickly. So that, that would be, you know, when, when you need to kind of evaluate how long you're staying in certain stocks, uh, how to digest the news that's out there, and, and how to make your decisions. Yeah, and I can just kind of reiterate, you know, a point I've been saying a couple times throughout this uh, webinar is that your risk is going to go up as your duration goes down. If you're a day trader, you're going to have more risk than if you're a swing trader. If you're a swing trader, you're going to have uh, more risk than an investor. Awesome. I hope that, I mean, that's, I some, mean, that's some basic stuff, but I, but I hope it kind of resonates with some people out there. And, you know, uh, I think another thing you touched on is, you know, the, the quicker you're in and out of the trade, uh, you know, the, the more likely are you, you're, you're playing against a computer or an algorithm and, and uh, you know, those things are quick and, and they're taking on a lot of different information and, and you know, able to make their moves uh, accordingly. And no emotion. No Remember, emotion, yep. What happens to a lot of traders is they get emotional, they get attached to a stock, they say, I love Apple, I'm a huge Apple fan, I would never sell the stock, and they're kind of attached to it. Those algorithms don't have that. They're all highly practical, they're 100% logical, they do what they're told to do, basically. So I, I would, you know, try to, if, if you are a retail trader, if you are trading for yourself, if you are doing your own work, it's not a great spot to be in to be competing against those uh, big institutions and algorithms. Excellent. Uh, you know, I, I think we, we have been on the on the line here for, for about uh, about an hour. I, I don't want to, you know, take up too much of you guys' time. Uh, I, I see here that we did have the calendars and the details that we were thinking about uh, being able to get to. Uh, I don't know if we're able to to get in, in and out of those conversations quickly. Let's, let's, let's plan it for another one. Let's Absolutely. That's, that's what I was thinking. Uh, and, and what I would like to do is, you know, open it up to you guys. Please let us know what you guys would like to hear about, what you guys would like to learn about. And uh, I'm dropping my, my email address over into the chat right now. Please, uh, you know, feel free to, to drop us a line. Also, uh, if you guys have any stock-related questions, any market-related questions, you guys will see right down here in the bottom right corner. Uh, sometimes when, when you click it, uh, it does disappear. So uh, if you've been on the platform for a while, so just uh, all you have to do is hover over the help button and uh, chat with the news desk. That will pop right back up. Uh, what you get here is uh, you get direct access to Brent and his team. So if you're ever wondering, uh, you know, maybe... Wait. Yeah, direct access. Direct uh, access. Was, that was like a plan. You guys can tell. <laughs> uh, direct access to their team. Uh, what they do is they chat you guys through any more information that the street might be passing around that might be going around in some of these chat rooms that we can't publish on the wire, uh, but we can pass that information along to you guys. And kind of how I like to I like to build this one a little bit. I like to pitch it a little bit. Is you get your very own news desk. Uh, I, I, I like to say it as your own personal research team. I mean, these guys will, will call up companies to get exclusive quotes uh, that came through through the chat with the news desk feature. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's a great, great way to get a little more color on different stocks, on different movement, on different activity. Um, but, you know, just so everyone knows, uh, this information is not trading advice. We are just uh, here to, to try and give you guys some informed information uh, so you guys can make the best uh, investment decisions. That's kind of what I would, what I would say about Benzene Pro. It's, it's another tool on your tool belt. We're not, we're not going to be giving you the buy or sell. 
but we're going to be giving you as much information as we can so that you can go make an informed decision on your own. Awesome. Well, uh, you know, from Detroit, from Benzinga, uh, we really appreciate you guys uh, 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 coming in and, and uh, listening to us today. Uh, drop us a line. Tell us uh, uh, what we did uh, that you guys were able to learn something off of. Tell us what you guys would like to uh, uh, hear about in the future. And, uh, you know, really appreciate you guys uh, sticking with us and, uh, you know, uh, are on the platform working with us. Uh, Brent, anything you'd like to say? No, nope, thanks for joining, everybody. It's been fun. See All you right. next week.